What's up, dick? Dick, 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 dick. Melissa's unpopular opinions. Horror hugs. And I don't have a third one. Wait, what the fuck happened? To her? <laughs> fuck! I just wrote this out. What happened? <laughs> What's wrong with me? All this and more on today's <laughs> brilliant observations. Ah, God darn it. <laughs> That's fucking staying. I think it's because we have a new segment. You got yourself twisted into a nipple knot. Ow, what's that? I don't want that. A nipple knot. It sounds awful. <gasps> right, 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 right. And the new segment, timing is everything. All this and more. <laughs> <laughs> Today's really nice. In it though. In it though. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that just the perfect thing to fuck up? <laughs> oh. Yes, my timing was everything. And I forgot to turn my phone off. But I'm going to turn it off right now. Doink. How are Hi, you, my Amy. love? Yes, how are you? Go, go, go. Tell I'm me. okay. I've been packing. We're spending a week at the beach because I'm going from quarantine in one house to quarantine in another house well, once I wipe it down. as with long Barbasol. as you stay in quarantine, then it's okay dokies. Yeah, that's kind of <coughs> how I feel, but I feel like once we go down there, my family is going to say, well, I know somebody hanging out at Wawa. Can I go to Wawa? <laughs> and uh, where are you going? <laughs> they don't have they don't have friends in the Wawa randomly. Come on. They so when you go to the beach towns, the teens uh, go to Wawa and they hang out in the Wawa parking lot. Didn't you see um say anything? I know about Wawa parking lots. I when you said I know someone, I thought you meant like because everyone from my town is magically going to the same beach because we live on a TV sitcom. Like I just didn't connect no. the dots that you meant there's some hot people down at the war war, yeah, so that's where I'm it. headed. Yeah, I get you that. So I remember, I remember youthy hormones. I, I'm not that old that my if memory you know will work. So much about girls. What are you doing at 10 p.m. on a gas and sip? <laughs> <laughs> uh, choice, man. Choice. It's our uh, choice. Choice. Uh, yeah. Um. So. I, you as well, we've both moved where we live into the green phrase or phase or stage three or whatever it is in your state. It's the, you can slowly move about the cabin, but if you were fucking smart, you'd stay in your seat with your seatbelt. Like that's the, it's the airplane analogy that I like so much. Yes, you can go to the pisher if you need to, but why, but for safety's sake, sit the fuck down, clip your goddamn seatbelt, and wait for the plane to land. Well, I got news for you. Where we live, we were headed like hell in a handbasket toward green, and it has been ripped from us. Oh, has it? Yeah, it's now July 17th, and people are up to their tits and shit. So we've got people waging lawsuits. We've got people um, demanding and ign- what he's defying the order. It's just ridiculous because some of the order was inconsistent in its application. It felt kind of weirdly targeted. We've been over this before, but at the same time, it all makes the fucking sense. Put on a mask, stay home, only go if you got to. Like it's what is that so why is that so hard? I don't get it. You can buy anything you need to buy and they will deliver it to you or you can sit in your car and they'll walk it out and put it in your trunk. It's just not come on. These minor experiences that you're missing, nobody has to close. The majority of people have figured out a way to adapt. The ones who had to close have already closed. You're not you know what I mean? We get the sadness every right. day. 3 of very precious favorite restaurants are no more. And it's more than three, but I mean three of my special favorite haunting places, haunts, yeah. are gone. And they made the decision to be gone because they also made the decision that they did not want to adapt on the required terms. And by that I mean... Step outside. No, and, they were saying things like, saying things that customer. made a lot of sense. I didn't get into, their quote was, I didn't get into the restaurant business to do takeout sandwiches to the trunk of your car. I have no desire to do that. So if someone said to me, you can keep your business open, but you fundamentally, now you get to be an accountant. Do you know what I mean? You get to do something totally different that you didn't sign up. I get it. I get that there, your business is no more. And the alternative to staying in business 
is just to stay in business. It's not some extension of where your heart really is. And in restaurant business, it's really fucking hard anyway. Right. So I get all that. Some had to close just because they couldn't do it. Some closed because they chose not to do it, et cetera. Some of those restaurants make their their <clears throat> lion's share from alcohol. And if they're making sandwiches for you, they can't be making a profit. They it's sell. A- they deliver booze here. Oh. You can have booze delivered to your house. You can do takeout cocktails. You can do takeout bottles of wine. So that's my point. It, the Adapt and, and Thrive was incredibly difficult in right. every conceivable category. Don't even need to get into it. It's that hard. But it's still, it's still a choice. The, yeah. the real challenge, I think, was the gyms because some of them have tried to adapt, but that's not necessarily all on them because their patrons are the ones who won't really adapt. They've adapted in that you can do it from home. And people are like, the whole point is if I could do it from home, I wouldn't go to a gym. So no. So they so that didn't work for them because their audience went away. And then others are doing it outside. So it's like, yeah, I'm not paying this money for a gym to work out on a yoga mat in your parking lot, which is what they've been doing. So I, I get, no. I get, yeah. So I get why, Ew. right. And people are fucking doing it. No. Yes. 5 a.m. in the morning on a yoga mat on asphalt. Uh-uh. Anyway, so I get... I get the unique challenges and I can even on some level understand partnering in a lawsuit as ridiculous as that sounds to come out of my mouth. Having said all that, the cases spiked and I think that we are and they're level. They've been level for, a you know, a couple of days or minutes and whatever we're judging things these days. Because our spike happened a little bit earlier because we had memorial. People are, some people think it's the protests. I think it's Memorial Day weekend when That's you're when you're is. an outdoor place and you're going to find New Jersey's going to have a spike because yes. people are going to the shore. And, you know, South Carolina is having a spike right now. And Myrtle Beach is now a hot spot. So Florida is a filth, filth, filth zone. You know, people come. They, they we have we have. Sorry, Florida. Listeners. We have beautiful, beautiful, Listener. beautiful outdoor magical paradise here. Absolutely. And people come and experience it. And that's just another opportunity to get sick. So there's way more opportunities. And and certainly people don't always wear masks and on and on. And Alamance County is another. Gee, thank you, idiots. You probably saw them in the news. They had the governor. Did you see the racetrack that they had open? Well, he got crafty, that little fucker. So they decided that they were going to have giant stadium, uh, shoulder to shoulder, everyone screaming, not a mask in sight, you know, unbelievable exhaust fumes everywhere and COVID up your crack. Watch these cars drive in a circle, beat them up, rough them up. Woo. That went on for, I think they had three separate sessions, over a hundred thousand people each time. And they got around, they flouted the thing by calling it a rally. They called it. It wasn't a race. They said, this is a, this is a rally for peace or some stupid, you know, they just made up some shit. And then somebody said, we well, can't sell tickets to a rally. And they said, okay, yes, we can. And it's, it's, you know, they just did that for until they finally got shut the fuck down. But all those people, they are a hot spot now. Do you, you think? Did you see the Palm Beach? Um, everybody voted in the Palm Beach County. Mm. Did you see those morons? They said everybody should wear masks. It's it's a it's for the community. <laughs> it's for a greater good. And then like they just showed four people on the news that said, "You're a doctor. I want to check your credentials." God, <laughs> you're you're messing with God's breathing system. <laughs> okay, that was the one that. <laughs> see, you're laughing now because I guess it's funny adjacent but i'm terrified that people in the world exist that are anti common sense and they turn things that are common sense and are greater good centered into an attack on themselves and i i'm i'm kind of horrified by it because if if you don't want to wear a mask stay home but you're not the people who are staying home. You're the people who are going out. <laughs> like, I don't need that bullshit. I really don't. Although, I and saying that, I want not to dwell on it because we've talked about it before, but I want to tell you that's probably possibly part of the fact that I have unpopular opinions. Really? I do. <laughs> I do. I, I don't like the beach. That's true. That is unpopular. You are in the you are in the zero category there. I don't like the beach. I don't like oysters. I agree with you, but I don't. <gasps> t- I don't tell people. I keep that one. I hide it. I hide it. I'll even eat them. Will you eat them? No, I don't like them. Why would I eat them? Just to see if you like them this time. 
Yeah, I do that with some things. I need like to think sex. about that, but I don't. I don't do that with oysters. <laughs> Try them again. Try them again. I I don't, I don't think I'm gonna do that. I mean, one of not that it, it may it, it, it indeed it may I just have to say because it's my heart's heavy. It may have been the very first time. If not, it was one of the very first times. It was a special time. I'll say that that I tried oysters, and Is this I was a Marnie story. No, I was guided. Okay. I was guided through it by our our friend who recently passed of COVID, Heat Miser. We were we went on a couple's uh, vacation to Newport, Rhode Island, and he ended up getting like crazy food poisoning after because he was eating all this seafood, and he was like, "And here's how you eat it, and here's how you eat that, and try this one in clams, and all this weird hogs, and all this weird fucking you know ocean trash. Put this in your mouth. It tastes like snot. <laughs> like it's like, what are you doing? Why? <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> so I would sit to the side and like try not to aspirate on my own vomit, and then later that night he was just in the bathroom. I hate to say it now, near death. And you know, Trish is standing out there. This was this was the this was the time when we were sort of getting to know Trish to see if she was we were all everybody else was coupled and this was their moment and they went on to be married and have fantastic beautiful children and the happiest life ever and he got cancer and beat cancer and he's super successful businessman and you know heading into probably another eight years maybe until you start thinking about retirement and all the kids graduating ivy league and everything's fantastic and coaches this and it's so great boom fuck fucking covid it was a heartbreaker It, it will be for a long time in any event I tried the fucking oysters because you should always try it. You never know Marnie if this is the time. Marnie makes me try foods. I don't like Well, that. I don't know that Marnie's going to be your food guru after she eats strange food off people's plates in the Denny's. Having said she, that. She eats anything. She's, she is, she is, she is a, a, a wonderful food advocate, but she also, you know, probably would be the one sitting cross-legged in some indigenous people's colony, you know, eating the crickets. I don't think I'm going to go that far. I'll try a cricket. Is what? it dipped in chocolate? No, it's live and its little legs are clawing no, at no, your mouth as it tries to go through your teeth. Crunch, crunch, like crunch, crunch, Like crunch, a crunch, Carrie's crunch. wedding when people were eating what? goldfish live that oh. were the centerpieces that on was, the table. That was, that was not. Don't eat live food. I don't have any answers for that. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> don't eat I can't live defend food. it. I won't defend it. It was a great party. And they're still married. Proof of concept. <laughs> okay. I met Dave Matthews at that wedding. <laughs> that was the coolest thing. Was he ever. there? Was he, he was, their band? I, no, he was touring. He was at the Oh, was he in the elevator? Was that the he thing was, in the elevator? Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember the elevator. I I there are very few things I remember about that wedding. <laughs> it was that fun. That does not surprise me. Um I don't like oysters. I don't like exercise. I think I've proven that. That's a pretty popular opinion. I don't like salads. I mean, I've had good What's salads with before. You? Salads but are delicious. You I do like too. It. You're full of lies. You like a salad. What's wrong with you? I really don't. You do. I mean, I've had good salads before, but you'll never hear me say, oh my God, I really need a salad. I would love a salad. I would love a salad. That's the first time I've ever said that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to work on that one. I'm gonna Things work on Melissa that would never say for a hundred And I don't jacks. know why I picked that one as the beach to die on when I would more likely be interested in having you like beach. Beach is the thing that you have to get over. That's just a life skill. You have to like the beach. So that's like saying I, t- I don't like breathing. Like it's not gonna work. Even if even if my kids would go to the beach and come back, I had sand in my teeth. There's no reason. I, I hate the beach. Sand gets in every orifice. It's uncomfortable. You're never at your home. I guess because I don't have a beach house. You're never home. I'm never comfortable. It's always hot. What if I have to shit and I'm at the beach? Do I need to use a community the bath level house? Of, of a- the level of neuroses involved in these questions is <laughs> deeper than the hour we have. But I will just tell you <laughs> that the beach is a glorious place gifted to Ew. us from the gods. And the fact Ew. that you shun it due to your bowel concerns is yeah, well, beyond me. I'm a Jew. I mean, that's what we have to do. I don't understand this Jewish thing with everybody needs to be 30 feet from a toilet at all times. What is that about? <laughs> So wait, this helps. Is answer that like that. in the book? This helps in the Torah. This <laughs> helps answer that. Did your parents exercise? <laughs> no. Nor did they ever eat a salad. Well, they would eat dandelion <laughs> greens, but that doesn't or that doesn't really count. No, zero. Okay. I was not raised with exercise as part of our lives. No. Who was? No one. A young people. People who were born, I was born in the 60s, so my parents were born in the, you know, 
30s and 40s. Yeah, there was no exercising except running from Nazis. Like, there's no, you don't, you don't get to exercise for funsies. I guess nope. that's the exercise my family did. Yeah, you're down, you're down on the docks hoisting cement on your shoulder. No, they're not fucking exercising. They're buying coffee for 20 cents. Shut up. Yeah, so I've never had the example for me of exercise. <laughs> even, when, even when we were, oh, also, I've never played a team sport. Should I hit that one up? Is you that, did. Yeah, I, I'm massively sporty. But why, why did you never play a team sport? Is this by choice or by happenstance? I wouldn't know. I think we all started because it's what you did in our, in our area. We all played soccer. And when I was little, you know, my mom put my hair in pigtails and I stood out there and I flitted around the field. And because there were three of us and two parents, <coughs> my brothers continued to play. And I guess they just didn't take me anymore. Well, I mean, I mean, or I sucked. I don't know. I, I, I can't I even know. believe I can't even believe that soccer was a thing when you were young. You're younger than me, but you're not that much younger than me, I don't think, to have it be feel like a whole generation. Like soccer is just kind of it was not a thing they didn't play lacrosse where I grew up no but even that was sort of not really the world's biggest thing I mean little kids didn't really play like I just don't remember soccer leagues when I was a child when I was a little child we'd go and you do a swim team you do a swim team or you would be a part of your rec league at school whatever it would be called your school thing where you would um baseball were the obvious things or softball for girls I'm sure okay. people played soccer, and I'm sure everyone's going, I played soccer. You're dead wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, nobody fucking Everybody played. There were no soccer, soccer leagues. Nobody was wearing cleats. You weren't wearing this fucking thing. I mean, by the time I got into high school, it was hockey and lacrosse. So, And they were, they were, everybody was playing football or l- hockey or lacrosse, and both kinds of hockey, field hockey and proper hockey for uh, the gents, you know, so when it's happening. But some people played soccer in high school, but I just don't remember it being like the peewee soccer league. That wasn't oh, yeah, the thing. We had but of course, hardcore. I was a competitive swimmer, so my head was underwater for a, a good 18 years. So anyway. And you know I can't swim, right? I, I have heard that before. <laughs> uh, you know I don't believe it, and I've tried. I've tried. You're so close. You're so close. <laughs> I don't even believe it. You have arms and legs. Gang, no, gang, no, 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 no. I've got to set the stage, first of all. I've been in many a pool and hurt her with you. So this is not like... She won't get in a boat. It's not. No, it's ridiculous. No she will get into water up to her tits. For someone who can't swim, I don't even understand the bravery and fortitude that that entails. I really don't. When you are you half, you're a you're a, a quarter of your body away from imminent death, and you're like, that's all right. Pass me a drink. <laughs> you got some balls on you. That's a big fucking deal. I have had her floating on her back with my arm supporting her. You know the lifeguard when you train somebody, float on your back. Float on your back. I don't think we've done face in the water yet, but I've seen you. You, you're, you're not water averse. You're very close. You're very close. Yeah, I'm, I'm swimming adjacent. And you're yet, one not session even away. Close. <laughs> you're one. I'm not away. saying you're gonna be Mark Spitz or whoever's the tall weed smoking one now that everybody loves. What's his name? I go to therapy and I got a kid and bad teeth, plus ADD, and I've won more medals oh, than anyone else. Me. Michael Phelps. Phelps. I took me a minute. <laughs> the first thing Spitz, I remember Phelps. is first thing Same I remember sport. is weed. You are very close to life-sustaining swim proficiency. And that's all that's needed. What else do you hate? <laughs> well, so so exercise is really the top. Oh, not good at. What are your unpopular opinions? Sorry. I so I, I tracked it back to, so I call my brother and I say, dude, you, he doesn't fucking exercise. I mean, we'll walk if we have somewhere to go or our spouse makes us do it with the children because we can't model shitty behavior all of the time. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> well, not some, get away with it anyway. We have to step up at some point and set a good example. It's clearly not my language. It's clearly not what I eat. Uh, exercise, not so much. So we have to, I don't know. So I asked him, he said, it's a, it's a, it's a Jewish thing. I said, I, I don't think it is. I know Jewish athletes. I know people who, I, all right, maybe that's. Yeah, they is. ran on the beach and, you know, da, 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 da. Chariots of fire. <laughs> Good freaking Lord. So I, I don't think it's a Jewish thing so much because I know people who exercise. Look, I told you I got this bike. I don't even have clothes to wear to exercise. who exercise. That's like, I know people who speak French. Some of my best friends are Jews. Um, 
Yeah. Oh my god. I don't even own the clothes to get on that bike. Like I don't even have have proper. Yeah, but you did it to yourself. You did it to yourself with your special Peloton pricey shoes. You figured it out. You bought the world's most expensive bike and exclusive. By the way, you joined a club for bike. <laughs> By okay. the way, my dogs ate those shoes. <laughs> No. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. How much are the fucking shoes? I don't know because they're exchanging them for me for free. But the, not even Did you like call the them up and say, hi, it's Karen. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they heard. So what I said, but it's definitely what they heard. I'm not interested in using your bike. But for some reason, my shoes have been chewed up by a very buckles. expensive rescue dog. <laughs> and I was hoping that along with a refill of my unsweet tea from Starbucks, <laughs> you could send me a free pair of shoes and four new pairs for my dogs. Thank you. That, that, um, that very expensive rescue dog who had two testicles. Oh, that's right. That's right. My nutless, <laughs> my one and a half nut rescue dog. <laughs> one and a half nuts. I ate your shoes. Yeah. Dear listener, go back and find the <laughs> one nut dog uh, podcast we did several months ago. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> God. Totally worth the it. The veteran who tried to neuter and then maybe gave up in the middle and only took out <laughs> one nut. Wait, how many was that? One? <laughs> two, wait, I gave what? you half price. One nut out. So I tried to figure, you know, if parents pass on that exercise um, regimen, that's not what I'm looking for, regime, that's, 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 those are two words I struggle with. Regimen. It's a men. It's a men. Remember thinking, I, I, don't, I don't, just think men. Regimen. I don't think men. So... So if it's something you get from seeing, you know, from your parents, I did not get that from them. Here, I can do it. Regime sounds too much like something your mother would War. say. And you don't no. like that. And so you don't like regime. So think right. it's regimen. Because the other one, regimen. you want to punch someone in the face. Yeah, I mean, I know once I say it, but after it, before it comes out, I'm like, mm, but back to the back to the parental influence. I'm surprised that we have a good friend who is one of these. Um, I will solve all of my problems through running. You know, I will I will uh, solve all of the world's problems through running. You know, it's like every the answer to every question. What is four plus six? Let's run like that's the answer to every question is to running. Her parents also have a history. God bless them of exercise. And it's like saying they have a history of mental illness. When I say it like that, they have a history, <laughs> me. A history of run of exercise. So I wonder if it is in bread with these these words are not the right words we love her and exercising is wonderful and healthy and a great habit to have so For other people well it's just it, one part of our experience we don't really eat vegetables that haven't already been coated in oil and vinegar so that's there's not you know fresh vegetables were the kind of a novelty they, they you cook your fucking food i'm an italian so anyway you you see what i'm saying i absolutely do and i mean every time both times my brothers got married, I got a phone call from a sister-in-law that said, can you tell me what a typical week of eating was like in your house? Because when it comes to cooking a meal, we think, you know, you thaw the encore chicken parm <laughs> and you put it for 12 <laughs> minutes. Oh, my God. Yes. You put it for 12 minutes and then you hack it out of the ice cube, the ice sauce cube it's in, and you flip it and then you put it on those for frozen, minutes. Any of Those frozen, any of that frozen shit, oddly, that was such a treat. That was always when somebody there was some weird reason that you got to have it because the normal mechanism was disrupted. So there was one of those and it was always a Salisbury steak. Yeah. And yeah, I love I mean, that weird shit. Oh, I love before, it. the fish sticks with the with the trail. That was my sister. That's why I couldn't remember dogs. it. Yeah. She used to call them. She used to call it. I think she called it freezer sushi or maybe it was sushi pops. She called them sushi pops because she would let the kids eat frozen fish sticks right out of the freezer. And that's I think so those are gross. Cooked, right. Those no, are I don't. It's the whole thing. The fact that the children would do it. It's just testament to her brilliance as a parent because my kids won't eat, you know, anything delectable that we could take them to. to I was watching a show with Wolfgang Puck. Normally think of him as as one of the greats. He really impressed me. They, we could take him to Wolfgang Puck's Vegas Steak Restaurant, and they'd be like, mm, "Did you have? Did you have something else? <sighs> what else you got? Oh my God, Mallory show. says that to me. What else you got? I'm like, a Fuck punch you. in the face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's uh, pretty uh, much it. Sorry about the violence, but you deserve it, really. <laughs> yeah. So so you get what you see your parents model, right? So, oh, so my brothers, when they came to make a meal, was like, uh, I'll open up a can of something, something right now sitting on my countertop to go to the beach in an hour and a half. You're so cool. Is, 
is Entenmann's Donuts, the, the <gasps> chocolate pack, <laughs> and <laughs> the <laughs> variety <laughs> pack, because Mallory doesn't like the chocolate ones. So what? I'll well, I, they do I, taste like wax, but it's great wax. It's the best wax. Don't fuck with me in super, that wax. Super, super. I love all variety donuts. I got an apple pie from the Amish market. I got oh peanut God. butter cookies with oh that chocolate dollop God. in the middle. Yum, 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 I yum, got a massive thing from Wegmans of chocolate chip cookies. I have all of this shit to bring to the beach. That's what my kids are learning from me. Just to eat shit. No, they're learning that's vacation. That is vacation. That's They're learning that's so vacation. Give yourself a fucking break, for God's sake. Captain Crunchberries. I brought <laughs> frosted mini wheat. That's so um, cute. You're preparing them from college. I am. So <laughs> my mother says to me, why don't you just bring a box of cereal? Why do you have to bring all that stuff? I said, well, my kids don't really Because I like love that. my children, Mom. Right. <laughs> I did not say that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Isn't that the truth? We're not telling the truth? Okay. Not today. <laughs> not today, sir. <laughs> not today, Satan. Um, so I said, my kids don't really eat like that. They like food. And then I did not tell her about the other on top of a game of sorry, which we're also bringing down there because we like family war. Well, here's Um, here's an important piece of this. Here's an important piece of this. Everyone in your household is and you don't get to fight this. Everyone in your household is at a gloriously healthy weight. There is no issue. There's no issue with sugar. There's no issue with blood yeah. levels. There's no issue with any of this stuff other than we know we could be closer to optimal than we are. So to talk about the gorge style binge fest that you're planning for the week is a vacation. It's a vacation from the everyday. It's it's everything in moderation, including moderation. Go overboard from time to time. And who the fuck cares? You are not at risk of anything. So do it with immunity. Shine the camera on yourself while you eat the, you know, box of cookies. Go we for it. Several boxes of cookies. Not everyone, brought- not everyone is coming from that position. Not everyone has the option to do this. You do. Enjoy it today. That's enjoy it this week without shame. Strawberries, plums, peaches, grapes. We brought all of that stuff too. Um, but I, I just for show, I think. So to serve to guests <laughs> that we're not allowing in the house. <laughs> Fruit salad. I do love peaches. Um, and, they, well, Costco peaches. So we got a pallet of peaches. And they're so probably, each one is as big as a boob. They are enormous. And they are sweet and perfect and drip down your chin. And they are just so great right now. And bananas. We brought bananas, too, because you want to put that in your Captain Crunch Berries. What? Yeah, so, I no. So okay. I was like, did I miss something bizarre of all the things that you have unimportant, unimportant, what's the word? Unpopular opinions about. Fruit in Captain Crunch? No. Absolutely. Well, it has fruit. They're crunch berries. What the fuck? That's right. And they're made of sugar. berries. That's right. That's right. They're the the best berries. Um, Dear listener, do you have unpopular opinions? I would love to hear your thoughts on shit that nobody agrees with you about, (laughs) which, yeah, um, I want to hear it. Do tell. Okay. I have another question. I'm ready. How and when does Elastic decide to quit? At the least opportune moment, I believe right, is the so answer. <coughs> I got this bike and I went to put on shorts that were elastic waist and kind of cushiony because I have um, numb labia at this point. <laughs> there I said it. <laughs> and that's, a, that's, that's a good porno. <laughs> Greens, ew. Greens Burrito said to me, <clears throat> oh, you'll be sore for a couple of weeks. I'm like, mm. weeks? Oh, <laughs> yeah. you're so cute. Until your body gets used no. to it. I'm like, I don't want to get used to that feeling around my lady parts. Um, so I went to put on these shorts and I <coughs> pulled them out of the drawer from the depths of the exercise corner and I stretched them out a little and I heard that sound. <coughs> you, you know that sound. I, I know it well. As the heebie and the jeebies <coughs> ran up my arm, I almost vomited on these shorts. So I was like, all right, these The only died. thing worse and simultaneously glorious then the sound of elastic failing beneath your grip is the sound of a bathing suit and the lycra that has been chlorinated to the point where it's just disintegrating in your hands. And the, the leg holes, when you go to lift up the suit, they go. So it's the same, really, it's right? It's very similar. It's just not as springy. But you can feel it kind of going. Give up. Yeah. I've done my best. I'm not it's, doing it. And this. it's so I've, it's so disheartening and also great at the same time. I took it as a sign. 
to that stop I wasn't riding meant to bike. Do so. Yeah, I feel like you got two signs that you've ignored. The well, three. The first was order now. You should have ignored that sign. The second sign was the dog ate the fucking shoes. The Just third the sign clips. was that your clothing has revolted against you. Two pairs. Two pairs the, of shorts. The fourth sign was that your lady biz is not interested in bearing all of your body weight while you hump a humpa on this weird plastic seat. Yeah, you're right. You're you're right. You're right. You're right. Right. What are you, you doing? You are right. What's what are what's you doing? Funny is you I should be out on a yoga mat in the asphalt at 5 a.m. in the humidity of the outside world, exercising with other people. <laughs> yeah, no. Part of the reason of, of my unpopular opinion, I don't like exercise, is uh, perfectly <coughs> expressed by this one woman who taught this class I took. And every time I take a class, they say all of these like inspirational posters come to life. There's a toilet 30 feet away. Let's ride. <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect for me. <laughs> that teacher, that instructor would get me. That no sounds... beach is in sight. All right. That's so what it. does she say to you? Treat your body like it belongs to someone you love. <sighs> That's creepy. Right. We're either going to settle in for blah or rise to the occasion. Here's my favorite. You can be a hot mess and fabulous at the same time. Embrace both sides. No. Mm. No, you can't, really. <laughs> I don't think so. It does, that's not how you don't I don't think you understand either either part of that sentence, instructor. It doesn't get easier. You just get stronger. <laughs> that's true. This, this is your story at any time. Hit us with a plot twist. Oh, for fuck's sake. What? What? Harlequin <laughs> romance are you reading from? People say this out loud and don't get laughed? Yes. They don't. They don't get laughed at. Well, I don't know who's really responding to them. Half of them have been at home. The, no COVID. one is actually voicing these words in sequence. Yes, they're yes, just yes, writing yes. them. They're just writing them because seeing no. these dumb slogans written somewhere, you think that's a failed successory. But nobody no. has the ball to actually say it while Hannah huffing does. and puffing. Hannah. Hannah does. Oh, Hannah. The booty and the saddle like each other. Let them flirt. Ew. No. 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 I won't. Your body is not Amazon Prime. She's not going to show up in just two days. Oh, God. It's very She says that one a lot. Uh, she says that one a lot. Oh, I hate. Uh, yeah. I, I fully hate. I would eat the shoes. I would eat those shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially uh-uh. the metal buckle. God. When you focus on the good, when you focus on the good, the good gets better. Like, I just, I couldn't with her anymore. So I was like, that doesn't even anything. mean anything. None of them mean anything. My favorite. Well, at the, we used to say in the advertising business, the the catchphrase was "good is the enemy of great." So when you focus on the good, you no, suck. Right. That was like. But that actually. Know. But that to me makes sense. Don't settle for good, or you'll never get to great. Right. That's right. So like what? I, that one makes sense to me. Well, and as part of it is, things can make sense in different contexts. Nothing that you said to me <laughs> felt like when I am in, you know, when I am nearing a stroke Sweat and my full and right. body is ready to break down and I'm wondering, is now the time that I dial 911 or do I trust my family <laughs> to do it? Like when these are the thoughts going through my head, I'm not going to be motivated to push myself past Further. imminent death to hear, you know, lottie hottie can of beads or whatever the fuck. Though. They're idiotic. They're not they even are. they're not even filled with passion. They're not of the moment. They're so ridiculously canned. I don't like any of those. I'm what's getting mad at Peloton is, right now. What's funny is you do get to that point where I do. Nobody else does. That I'm about to stroke out. But I, if I fall off the bike, my feet are still connected. Cause You're fucking in. trapped <laughs> by this thing. That's horrible. <laughs> That's yeah. horrible. I will yeah. say this. I will say this. Um, w- the place where I used to go and don't go right now because yeah. I don't want to die of COVID. Camp. Yeah, yeah. It's They do say a lot of these things, but they but they're... They're so connected and in it with you that the stuff that they're saying makes a lot of sense right in the moment. And it's not, none of it is canned. You know, nobody is reading from a script when you are ready to die because you're doing this thing and the intent of, is to do this thing that is very difficult to do for a full two minutes. You know, she'll, she'll, yes. she'll be there screaming and she'll, you'll get three quarters of the way done. And that's when she starts, for no reason at all, she starts screaming, don't you dare give up now. You'll be so angry. You put in this much time. Go all the way to the end because you can do it. You know, uh, that's 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 what, what you're feeling. She's right. tapping into where your brain is like, fuck this shit. And already she's saying, you know, don't stop, don't drop, don't stop, blah, 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 all that other stuff. And then the kind of inspirational mumbo jumbo that they post or say on the like the bathroom sign is really great. But they don't yell it at you when you're in the middle of having a heart attack. 
you know, and it's like exercise is not punishment for what you ate. It's a celebration of what your body can do. That's a great thought. And I love seeing that in the toilet when I'm washing my face. I don't like hearing it when I'm ready to pass out on this floor that many yeah. people have likely vomited on. So, no. I went out with Pick I went out moment. with my friend Brandy for a breakfast, you know, a distanced breakfast. We ate outside. She sat on the other side of the table. And I said, look, I don't know how people can push themselves to this resistance. She goes, well, look at your legs. Look what you're working with. <laughs> oh, my God. Brandy. And I was like, I was oh like um, oh my God. this is your friend. Are you sure? Yeah, I love her. Yeah, I am sure. <laughs> um, I'm like, uh, thanks. Look at uh, your legs. No thanks. Wow. Wow. But part of it's like, she's right. I have stick legs. I don't understand how you expect a stick leg to be enough muscle to push as far as somebody with a monster leg who has a muscle that has the strength to put. I, I, You're not comparing yourself to anybody else. You're not. Well, that's the thing. When, they ch- when you log on to stupid shit like this, they could check what you do. I actually got in contact last night with a, an old camp friend. Sorry, Alyssa, that I called you old. And I opened her up to the world of brilliant observations. So she's now a new subscriber. Oh, thank you. And welcome. And we're sorry. She posted one of those, you know, one of the, we're sorry. Let's get ahead (laughs) of it right now. You know those, um, like, word problems with the pictures that you have to solve on Facebook? And you're like, the answer is 522. And if you solve it. You could say you beat me, and we'll put it up on. You can put it on yours, and yes, you have to get I, the I right can't scroll first. past those fast enough. Yes, I know of those. So I was laying in bed. I can't see my phone in front of me, which is my favorite way to read Facebook because I don't get as annoyed with those trolls. Please hold. Um, <laughs> and, and I was like, okay, here's a number. And normally, I don't put myself out there for anything. Here's a number, and she writes back right away. Nope, nice try though, or try again, or sorry, something like that. And I'm like, fuck. Right, yeah, well. my favorite is, is when you do anything like that and the answer is this brutal, uh, suck it up, dunce. Like, they don't even make it. <laughs> like, oh, thanks. So I had fun playing this little game and now I'm shamed publicly forever in writing. <laughs> Whee! That's a good use of my time. So I was time. like, fuck, maybe I should get my glasses. <laughs> So I put on my glasses. And now you're motivated and, to do this thing that you vaguely didn't even want to do to be fucking begin with. And I'm tired, right? Uh, so I'm tired. Uh, but so. I will not get a nope. So I th- exactly. Sorry. And then I gave another answer. She's like, nope, sorry. I'm like, son of a bitch. So I have to take it How apart How did I put you in this one. position of power, Hannah? Anyway, right. I'm sorry. Whatever her name is. <laughs> so then somebody else we know in common posts an answer. <gasps> and she wrote, nope, sorry. And then I wrote back to to the other girl and says, she's not sorry she said she's that, not she sorry doesn't mean she's it loving all. this this is mean girl territory she's having yeah, a she ball doesn't. yeah you you remember her as lovely i remember her as lovely. you should right answer now. back and say you nope nope you you should pull the donald trump no, i'm no puppet you're the puppet nope you should so, nope it you should nope everybody go in there nope 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 from <laughs> melissa i bet you you would take over that fucking post that's you're all people want to do is take it they want to hijack the post nope Nope. And then you could post individual comments. N. New comment. O. New comment. P. New comment. E. New comment. Nope. Exclamation point. Check it out. Dope. So <laughs> finally, I was like, all right, I actually have to look at every single picture because obviously. Oh, for so goodness I put the glasses sake, on. the level of investment. Okay. It was way more. <laughs> And I finally did, and I, I figured it out, and I sent it to her. And then we started like an off. Now off you can be feed. friends again. You got the yep. <laughs> An off-feed conversation, and she said, I miss the gym. And I'm like, I don't know you at all. We're, nope. That's <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. Try Sorry. Again. Sorry. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Wrong answer. I miss the gym. Yeah. Really? Which, which okay. tells me uh, we used to be friends. We could <laughs> never be again. No, she is lovely. And what's funny is she just bought a Peloton, and she's waiting oh my for delivery. God, another one of these people. Yeah, she's I don't understand you people. I yeah. really don't. Don't don't I mean, let me in it there. Puts, don't. It puts your putt on fire. It doesn't connect with your legs. You have to buy extra shoes. There's just a lot involved. You yeah, have a want- bicycle. Go in the street. I I'm don't- so dangerous. You don't know about my bicycle accidents that I've had in the past? With an S? Fuck no. I think we <laughs> yes. need to take a sidebar into <laughs> idiot town. Tell me about your bicycle accidents. Why don't we put that on Patreon as extra content? Oh, yeah, on Patreon. <laughs> sure. <laughs> so last night, I'll catch us up. So last night, the kids over dinner 
were berating me when they discovered that we do not have a Patreon page. Yet. Because, yet. Because they think that we should. And so this boiled down after a long and boisterous conversation into, I will set it up for you. And I said, it's not about that, you little twerp. They said, okay, well, if you don't have boop amount of money within boop amount of time, I will, I'll bet you you will. And we didn't bet anything. But the, the reality is, I know how much you guys love us. And we ain't going to have anywhere near the kind of money that these idiots think. They seem to think that if content is put out into the world, that act alone makes the content creator a bazillionaire. Well, they, uh, uh, uh. they just don't get it. So uh, partly to shut up my children, <laughs> because that's really the only reason we do anything. Anything. We're, ma- we're making a Patreon page <laughs> just to shut up our kids. We've been doing this now for two years, but... Because my kids had an argument with me and a dare, then we'll have a Patreon page. So you're going to go on a little vacation to the beach. You're going to eat a lot of donuts. I'm going to go on a vacation to the back porch. I'm going to set up a Patreon page. And then maybe next week we'll have we'll have something new to talk about that, you know, we know nothing about and that is very unpopular. (laughs) Having said all of that, I want you to know, dear listener, we would not do this if we were not offering more if we were not offering you something worth something so right pictures of pictures of things you wouldn't otherwise see and i i don't mean to go back to the numb labia we're not that kind of show we're not we're not like that even if that's what you were thinking we're not you just stole the punchline right from underneath (laughs) my labia (laughs) wow well yeah so here's what i've figured out it is really hard as we see more people not to touch them, not to hug them, not to, I don't know, these people. I'm a hugger. And I tell you, there are only like five people in the world I like, but I, I'm a hugger. Like I, I'm having a hard time. And I'm guessing these, this horror hugs up here are, I guess I had to guess what you put <coughs> online. I added something to our show notes for us to discuss and talk about, and it was horror hugs because I'm a very tactile person. I got to grab everybody. I'm Joe Biden. Hey, I'm Joe Joe Biden. So I got to grab everybody all the time. And I try to be aware that that's not appropriate, but most of the time I don't really care. And I, you know, because lots of the time people are coming at me the same way. So it's, it's, I try to have a good read on, you know, trying to be slow or abrupt or, you know, not come in for the kill. In my own home, if you're anywhere, if you're on the same floor of my home as me, I'm going to grab you. That's the way it works, and I don't care. You are of me. We are connected biologically, so shut up, right? So evidently, all of my children now, including the um, 12-year-old, are as tall as me or taller. I love that. Totally taller than me. So when I go in to hug them, they're dicks about it, not because they're boys, not because I've trained them already since birth that I'm going to be clawing on you, you know, like your your life itself, right? But they they finally explained it to me because evidently when I would go after them to give them a hug, oh, I would after them I really would make this awful. I would make this face with my arms open and it looked like I was trying to kill them. And so they would they would like be like ugh, ugh, and they would pull away and I finally got mad about it. And the and Rocco explained it to me, and he goes, "You look crazy. You look like a crazy person." And I was like, "Shut up!" And I don't know if I had a mask on or what the thing was. And he goes, "Here's what you look like." And he took three quick steps at me with his arms open and his eyeballs giant. It's and it looked yes, and it felt like a specter coming down the hall in the ring or something that's gonna rah like it. And I was like, "No!" And I I was like, "What are you talking about?" Because that's you know you put your hand out to reach to grab to try right, to pull right. somebody in. And I guess because of the height difference or whatever, or because I'm fucking <laughs> crazy, right? So I was like, ew. And he's like, and then everybody's laughing, right? Because that's exactly what you look like. So then it's been a whole week of this really weird stilted. I'd go to hug somebody, but then I would like stop and do whatever. And then uh, Petey is a fucking dick because he's tall enough that when I go in, he wants to put, I can't, he wants me to put my arm around his shoulders and I can't fucking reach it. So all I can do is put my arm around his body but then he somehow feels like I'm going to be tickling his arm piece. Yes, 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 yes. Don't, and so there's a don't touch me theory. In you there just too. can't. They're, no, they're okay with it. But it's like the, the act of getting in position for a hug. And the little one, oh, God, he's, he's picked up this southern thing, which I fucking hate. I'm sure it's perfect, but I fucking hate it. He only gives side hugs now. 
He won't hug me. He just mm-hmm. won't hug me. He'll only do a side hug. And in the South, it's polite and proper that you give a side hug. Does that mean anything to you? Do you know what that no. is? I know what a side hug is, but no, we don't do that here. A, a side hug is, for the most part, Southern men will only ever give a side hug. And it's a, instead of putting the fronts of your bodies together when you hug each other, they side come in side. and then side to side. So I guess it's a nice way of saying, I'm not going to contact all of your front parts and this part and that part. I love seeing men shake hands and men hug. I, I mean, those that's a, I love, I don't know why I love that, but I love that, that brotherhood, that camaraderie. I love that. And I, I had a girlfriend's daughter come over and spend a little time with our family and I, I, I can't squeeze you. I can't, I, it's, it's physically uncomfortable for me. When I leave lunch with somebody, I can't touch you. I can, I'm, I'm really upset. And by the that. toe taps and the elbow thing. And the, it's just it's not it's, it's not the fucking same. It's just not the fucking same. So um, with all the heartache and the madness and craziness and everybody is masked up all the time where in my world where we are, it's always there's always a mask. At that point, if I've been close enough to be I'm not hugging my 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 um, takeout person. I'm not hugging the right. person in the checkout. So the people that I'm around If I'm around anybody, it's because I've already decided they're coming closer into our bubble or our circle or whatever you want to call it. I'm I'm giving them a fucking hug. I'm just going in for because they also, you know, you sort of start it. You put your arms out and they're like, yes. And then you go in and it's it's two and a half seconds and you're done. So uh, and then you get in the decontamination tent. uh, It's none of it. It's all degrees of um, risk and the scale for risk continues to go. You know, the needle for risk is in the red already and it just goes deeper in the red. So I don't I don't I don't purport that any of this stuff is low risk in the low, medium to high risk category. Um, At the same time, we are doing what we can with what we got. Yeah, it just hurts me that I can't touch like it's psychological that I can't leave the house, but it's 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 a physical craving for contact and my kids really do suffer because I lay hands on them all the time. They're like we're really going to call somebody about how you <laughs> can't stop fucking touching me. I'm like, you should. <laughs> you absolutely but that's norm. But that's normal. I mean, you're, you're pretty, I don't think anybody's a touchier person, meaning a grabby person than me. You've seen me around my kids. Oh yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, even talking to you, you grab a forearm just to make sure you. Yeah. Yeah. And I have, yeah. So, I mean, that's how it works. Sorry. Get over it. I'm not going to change. <laughs> Not, not for you. <laughs> no, but in terms of the hugs, so I stopped, which has been really weird. And then they've been, now it's this big jokey thing where they try to come up to me. And so, I mean, we're figuring it out and working it out. But, and we've long have decided, figured out that I have to, if I'm going to hug them, I got to go stand on the fucking step, which is shitty, but I do it anyway so that we can reach properly. My kid's almost 6'4". I'm in his <laughs> armpit. It's fucked. It's yep. just it's just not right. And that, like ain't, I don't that ain't no place for a woman to be. I'll tell you. <laughs> You're right. I'm a 17-year-old boy's armpit. Almost 17. So reading the New York Post is something I used to do on the train while commuting from Long Island to Manhattan. Popping up on my Facebook feed, I did see this article, and it made me really, (laughs) really, really, really miss the New York Post. Leech swims up man's penis, drinks pint of blood before Doc pulls it out. Why do you come again? Come again? Why do you? Why do you? What? Why? Why are you saying these words? And here's a worm that will make you squirm. Doctors in Cambodia recently removed a leech that, in wince-worthy fashion, had entered an elderly man's penis while he was swimming and drank a full pint of blood. An unnamed patient first knew something was awry after experiencing severe pain while trying to use the bathroom. Reports viral press. Viral press. Yeah. He wound up in the hospital, and a tiny camera was inserted into his penis. How big is your dick hole that you can't tell a leech went in there? How big is your dick hole that a leech could fit in there? Leeches is big. Why are you showing the picture of the leech? I don't want to see it. I do want to know. You're not a good person. You are not a good person. (laughs) How big is your dick hole (laughs) that a leech? I I mean, I don't have any kind of frame of reference. I don't spend a lot of time envisioning this but methinks it's pretty fucking tiny right isn't it tea tiny tattoo does is that the kind of thing that just stretches out over time until it's like a coffee cup width and no it's tiny and it stays tiny it's got no reason to be leached width is this correct 
Tell yeah, me about I, the dick hole, Doc. <laughs> Are you looking for our NPHD and our NMD? I'm just saying, <laughs> if you're swimming somewhere that's got leeches in it, and you've got such a floppy dick hole that some shit could swiggle it up there, those the are two solvable problems. The poor soul told doctors that he went swimming in a river earlier that day, leading them to deduce that the privacy-violating parasite. <laughs> do you not miss the New York Post I as do. well? <laughs> I do. I'm in had a New York state of mind. I had love swum it. up his urethra. And into his bladder. Indeed, the hospital warned locals that the waters are rich with leeches and other insects during rainy season. Um, unfortunately, because <laughs> the rest of it was so fortunate. I love the post. Unfortunately, removal was complicated by the ah! fact that the interloper had ballooned up to a much larger size after sucking a pint of the victim's blood. Hence his pain while urinating. Ah. Oh, my God. That it's is It's a teeny, so gross. tiny, teeny, tiny hole. Like, I don't understand how that happened. Not on that, dude. Not anymore. Even when it started. I mean, think that's just gross. That's gross. It only has one purpose. And that's for piss to come out. It's not an entry door saying welcome to leeches. This is so disgusting. This is so disgusting. For, he was released after a night. This isn't the first time a leech has infiltrated an unlikely orifice. In 2018, a video surfaced of a blood-sucking worm being pulled out of a man's nose in China after the patient complained of having nosebleeds. Okay, so Ugh. the moral of this story is subscribe to the post before it's no longer a paper, <laughs> before it's no longer fit to print. Band-aids for your dick hole before you go into the pool, I guess. I, could you not cover that up? Like, how could you? <laughs> and, and if it were a woman? Nope. That's a worse. nope. See, see earlier. Nope. Har hard noich. Is that what we're talking about here? Oh my god. <laughs> That's a hard noich. No. 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 That's a no. That's a pass on the penis. Gross. So we talked earlier about a new segment called "Timing Is Everything," and I want to say that I really feel connected to that statement as opposed to everything else Hannah said when I was on the bike earlier this morning, <laughs> totally disconnected. Timing is everything. When people say things to me like, well, it wasn't meant to be, I want to punch you in the fucking face. You make things happen. You, I got out of fucking bed and got on a bike. I don't exercise. Like, let me be clear. <laughs> don't tell me that it wasn't meant to be. But I do believe... <coughs> that timing plays a huge role in our lives. I, when I met my husband, we were ready. If I had met him six months before, uh, he was on a mad tear. I was on a mad tear. Like we were very different places, but when the timing works out, I really feel like magic can happen. Not because it was meant to be, but to, I, I feel timing <laughs> is a, is a better way if, you feel like it's the same thing. Uh, let me tell you other podcasts you can listen to. I really don't argue with me. <laughs> <laughs> let me send you in other directions. Um, do you have any cases where timing was really? Look, I had I've, I have discussed this before. I had a, I had a couple of pregnancies before I had my oldest, but one of them went to way too long for something to go very wrong. I went to like 19 and a half weeks in a pregnancy. It was awful. It was terrible. And if somebody turned to me and said, well, I'm meant to be, I definitely would be in prison right now. I would still be in prison. But the timing of all of these things led me to have this boy child who shot out at nine pounds, six ounces. Yeah, yeah, sure did. And, and gave me this boy who, don't tell him, but I kind of worship a little. And he wouldn't be here if that were just timing, timing, timing. Don't tell me meant to be. So do you have, I, I know I haven't given you much time to think, and if this is something you want to concentrate on, more so for our next episode. And dear listener, if you would like to share, please fucking share. <laughs> a story where timing has played such a role in your life. I walk by this building and the air conditioner fell down right behind me. Timing it saved my life. Do you have a story? I have more stories than we have podcasts to air. Timing is huge. And uh, 
I saw this on the board and I started thinking, oh, timing, timing, timing. And I've got a lot of stories that are that are wonderful and heartwarming. And you think, oh, wow, I can't even believe that's great. But in my own life, the ones that come to mind are negative timing. So I want to challenge myself to come up with because that's not the case. I always like the timing ones that I remember for me is these things happened and then um, because and then this negative thing occurred or blah, blah, blah. You know, it just didn't seem like un- unlike the timing stories that come to mind in my family and in our experience. Every single one of them is crazy, kismet styled, heartwarming. I mean, the, the fastest, easiest one is my two uncles. My dad's older brothers were both in World War Two. They were both deployed and both played significant roles, both of them, uniquely in completely different uh, regiments or companies or whatever they're even Ooh, called. Regiment. Did you hear it? Regiment? <laughs> in regimes. So, yeah. Anyway, so they, they both, I mean, they both had, they, the, it had a significant impact on them and they had a significant impact on it. And I have lots of negative stories, which are stunning, but like life changing stories. Uh, I'll tell you two. One that's really up and one that to me is kind of creepy and down. Which one do you want first? Why don't you end on the up? Give me the okay, creepy so down. Okay, so the creepy and down is from my Uncle Carmen, who is the older of the two brothers, not by much, but uh, was the older of the two. And he was somewhere um, rifled up, you know, ready in a very dangerous situation and heard rustling in the in the pitch dark heard rustling in the surrounding forest trees whatever might be around him somebody approaching somebody super approaching and he made a split second decision not to kill not to fire and kill this person and when the person emerged it was a resistance worker bringing him soup right okay wow and he he came back from the war and never talked about it and is you know the most wow. wonderful, pleasant, peaceful. He is he is the best of people that you would ever want to be around. Lived a lived a charmed life, and that is just one of many, many, many stories. Wow. So he he felt he felt in that moment that he was protected from doing something to, that would, he had to make a choice. Right. He, he felt that he was he was protected by something larger than himself. Right. Very very faithful man. All right. And he so got that, soup. So and he got soup. So that same and she was like a young teen. She was like a young, young woman. Like it wasn't even like it would have just been as bad as you can imagine. OK, so cut to uh, at some point in the war, uh, he was furloughed to give a you know, maybe it was at the end. I don't know what when furloughs happened, but he was given some opportunity to go uh, to Paris and have just a moment's escape. And he was walking down the street in Paris, just walking down the street on this this moment of relief and reprieve and looked across the street and saw his fucking brother, who I already told you was in a oh completely different, who had the exact, they were on the same, on opposite sides of the same street same in lead. Paris in the same day on the same. And they, then we have this picture of the two of them like hilariously locked arms because they just bumped into each other in Paris when they hadn't seen each other for the entire war, deployed totally separately. It was like just the most... Oh my gosh! Timing. Wow, that's crazy timing. Uh, last one, last one. So my grandmother, when she took him to the train station to deploy, she'd sent them both at the same fucking time. Took him to the train station to deploy and was coming back home. She walked out. They deployed through New York, um, so she walked out into the street and found a ten dollar bill in the street. Found it. And she called it blood money. So she took it home and held on to it. This is a time when $10 is a lot of money. Everything, yeah. And, and desperately needed, right? She took it home. She kept and she and we, the, we still have it. So she kept it all this time. Aww. She called it blood money. And there's and with it is her little handwritten in her in her you know swoopy, swoopy, old-fashioned cursive writing, found this on this street on this day, you know. And if she goes on the Reddit board, she could find out who <laughs> lost it on that street on that day. I saw some old woman pick up my She's, shit. She it's clearly is no longer with us. God rest hey, her. So who's I, I understand the age old um, tradition of handing down these stories from family to member to family member. Who's writing this shit down in your family? Not enough. We have a few. Uh, okay. My my PD of all people picked uh the men in our family to do a kind of a genealogy project for for social studies in seventh grade or eighth grade or something and he put together this massive document which is which is stunning and amazing but it's it's definitely i mean they're his uncles uh were famous in their own right and were on the three stooges and bob hope and all the rest of this shit and was like oh really 
So every every single thing. So he that's how many of these stories are continuing to be passed because they were passed to me across the table when I was sliding the food that I just made by standing at my grandmother's side all morning after church making the food for the for the you know 30 people who would come to breakfast every single week. We don't have after that cleaning anymore. cleaning the wall. Yeah, we don't have that anymore. We don't have that anymore. So we're all every which aware. So it it needs to be written down better than this, but at least it's written down in some fashion. So Story now it's worth. another fucking thing I got to do, I guess yeah, you're saying. Uh, well, right after Patreon. Story <laughs> worth is that gift I gave my parents, uh, which sends them a prompt, right, that you should have heard some of the last prompts. They were, I Are can't. You, you're so good you're not even going to tell us? I can't. They're just so ridiculous. Yeah. I don't care about that. I want to hear about this timing with you. Your whole m- impetus for timing is everything is if I'd met Stu a week earlier, I'd still be banging somebody else, and then I Everybody wouldn't be here else. with a chewed up Peloton. That's your that's your poignant timing is everything. you got to do better than that. I, no, this I, love story has to start from something. This. Oh, my God. You're telling the genesis of this love story because it's the timing fine, is everything. Fine, it's fine, the timing fine, is fine, everything, fine. you ding. Dear listener, I met my husband. In the traditional Jewish manner. (laughs) I met my husband. Some of you may know this. um, By, we were set up on a blind date by his mother. I used to commute from Long Island to Manhattan on the Long Island Railroad. And I would sit next to, well, first I would wait for the train in the pitch black darkness and silence with this lovely woman and... We commuted, commuted, commuted together. Then w- every afternoon, I would get the 507 or the 511, whatever it was, to come home. Guess who was on my train? So we had conversations every day. I talked to her more than I probably talked to Stuart now on a daily <laughs> basis. We were captive audiences for an hour going, an hour coming back. I protected her when she was sleeping. She protected me. <laughs> we, we had a great relationship. And then finally, one day, she said to me, you are lovely, and I have a son. And I thought, are you fucking kidding me? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> are you fucking kidding me? Good feeling gone. Yeah. <laughs> so she asked me for my phone number and set me up with her son. And I thought, well, she can never complain she doesn't like me because she literally picked me up <laughs> and brought me home. Now, I don't boy. know this part. Was he already the Jewish doctor at he that was point? He medical school. Or he was studying. He was still studying when you guys got together. Yeah, he went to medical school in Syracuse, and I would... Take yeah, I knew that because I, I went... Of course I knew that he was hadn't finished yet. Yeah, anyway. Okay. I would take the bus up to visit him on the right. He was home for spring break. We watched the final four together, and we I would take the bus to visit him through all kinds of weather because Syracuse gets really bad weather. Dear Syracuse listeners, sorry. <laughs> um, but, yes, yeah, so we just happened to – we met on a train, and, and so that is another timing thing. That is another – taking another train uh, – one train later, one train earlier. I wouldn't be where I am with the children I have on the way to a beach house I don't want to go to uh, to isolate and make my family feel guilty for leaving the house. I can't wait to hear the results of this beach Timing. Trip. You know what? You've been to a spa before where they take the stuff and slather it all over your skin and remove the unwanted skin so that the fresh pretend skin comes out. Bing! You've used exfoliants before. The on beach, my face. Yeah, yeah. On your whole body. The beach is a glorious ex- You come back and you're shiny and everything's gorgeous and your hair is wonderful. What? There is nothing wrong with beach. There's nothing wrong with a little sand. It gives a little grit in your spit. It's delicious. <laughs> I don't need grit in my spit. Oh, I come need on. Waxy donuts in my spit. That's <laughs> what I mean. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, we'll see. Dear listener, thank you so much for showing up, which is just what the Peloton instructor told me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> all right, finally something worked. Okay. Showing up is half the fight, and I think it's I think it's two thirds. So thank you for showing up. Thank you for downloading. Tell a friend. Tell all your friends. Tell them nice things. Don't hug them, uh, Amy recommends. Uh, you can find us on all the socials at Listen Brilliant. Write to us with your fun stories, brilliant observations at gmail.com. And what am I missing? Join our Patreon page. Just, miss, <laughs> just missing you. Just missing you. Go have fun. We'll have more next week, and you'll be here to hear it. And we're so grateful. Thank you. Bye. Bye.